Hello, Anne. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. What do you think we should talk about today? Well, I was meeting with some brand new buyers buying their first house yesterday, and I had a conversation that I think we have a lot with buyers, especially lately, about old houses. Yes. yes. Old houses. Did Everybody, you, did you break their heart? They were so resilient and strong. Like, they took it like champs. Good for them. The thing is, is that everybody wants, not everybody, a lot of people want to live in an old house. Here here in Tacoma, particularly kind of north central, you know, in some parts of South Tacoma, that's a that's very in-demand property. Right. We have these beautiful craftsmen and Victorians. And they all say the same thing, right? I like built-ins. I like character. Crown molding. Wood floors. Just charm. I like charming home. Everybody wants a charming home. Character. Oh, character. I love That's character. We We're in a beautiful, character-filled, charming condo here right now at the Ansonia. 100 years old. 100 years old. Beautifully restored. And that's the key detail, is that in this particular situation, all of the mechanical systems have actually been updated. So three things to pay attention to on your older charming home would be the heating system, how it's being heated, um, electricity, like what kind of wiring does it have, and pipes, what kind of plumbing does it have. Okay, because these are things that will, will come up and uh, you may not understand the implications, even the day of inspection sometimes. Your inspector is going to try to walk you through that, but it's a lot to process. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you're typically emotionally connected to the home and you really want the deal to move forward. And so you may either downplay or in some cases panic over what your inspector tells you. So think ahead a little bit. And one of the items that Marguerite mentioned is electrical wiring and uh, knob and tube in these older homes is a really common phenomenon for us yeah. here. And there are some insurance companies that will take issue with knob and tube wiring. Be prepared for that. Uh, talk to your insurance company, maybe even before you write an offer, mm -hmm. so you know if that's a problem you're going to have and you're not feeling like you've got to switch at the last minute and that makes you uncomfortable. Knob and tube wiring uh, is in a lot of these older homes and it basically runs in a, a sheath, like a cloth sheath almost, and in these porcelain insulators. And sometimes you see it in houses and it's active, and sometimes you see it and it's been disconnected, but it's something definitely to look out for. And usually it's the issue of um, what kind of panel is it run into? I mean, that's the other thing that inspectors right. call frequently. Well, and I think more often than not, you've got some new wiring mixed in with the old. Yeah. So, you know, you might have new wiring in the kitchen and new wiring in the bathroom from a kitchen or a bathroom remodel, but your upstairs bedrooms still have those two prong outlets. Or maybe even there, you see the three prong outlets that make it look like they're grounded outlets, but it's still knob and tube wiring in there. So your inspector is gonna open up the panel, yep. find out how much of it's new, how much of it's old, and, and it, give you an assessment. And it is scary, but for instance, if you have a outlet that's ungrounded, it doesn't have the third prong, there are things that you can do, like have a GFI installed at that outlet. I mean, there are solutions to these things. Sometimes it's not even the 100-year-old houses. I mean, sometimes a house built in the 70s has aluminum wiring. Mm -hmm. you, you just need to be, maybe do a little homework and be prepared for those scenarios to come up because they're, pretty common. And the home inspector is the person you're going to want to turn to for advice. Oh, one other note on that. Your home inspector often will defer and say, have this looked at by a licensed electrician. So again, you may want to be prepared for who would I call if under that circumstance and bring somebody in. Sometimes with, um, oh, I've had this happen before, like with an FHA loan where the appraiser will say, oh, there's quite a bit of knob and tube in this house. We'd like to have an independent inspection and verify that it's all safe and in working condition. You may want to do that on your own. So if you're nervous about the knob and tube, have an electrician come in and look at it and give you some recommendations. It's not always the end of the world. The electrician's going to say, rewire the house. <laughs> so I, there's a lot of there's a lot of intermediate solutions because in these beautiful old homes the things that you love about them like the plaster and the molding make it difficult to retrofit the overhead lights and the light switches without tearing open the walls and that's where I think that's sort of the point of our video is that you want charm and character sometimes that comes at a at a particular cost you need mm -hmm. to compromise on on other items another thing I think uh, first time clients uh, first time buyers often say is like I have a friend who's an electrician or I have a friend who knows how to do electrical work so my dad's an electrical contractor it's a real handy thing to have a family member who yep. is a licensed and bonded electrical person yep. but if uh, you just have a friend that's going to come over and help you with some repairs that can be bad juju because someday you're going to sell that house and there's going to be a line on the form that says have you done any unpermitted repairs to this house and you're going to have to say yes so 
as always, let's like please recommend that if you do fool with the wiring, have a professional for, fool with the wiring. The, <laughs> for those major systems, and plumbing yeah. is often the same case. So I just came through a home inspection and there was quite a bit of plumbing that had been done very amateurly and the seller ended up spending more than a thousand dollars to correct improper drains underneath the kitchen sinks. Uh, the bathroom. So in these older homes, um, one of the most common corrections or problems that we run into is galvanized plumbing. Mm. And galvanized plumbing, if you haven't already done your homework on it, it rusts from the inside out. And so the pipes get smaller and smaller. And that's what often leads to low water pressure in these homes. And uh, they'll rust until they leak in many cases. And so that's, again, an item that your inspector might note. You don't have to freak out about it, but you do want to be aware. Um, and it's something that many people will want to have replaced or well, retrofitted. It's, it's so great that we have home inspectors because it's not something that you necessarily notice. Like if you turn on the shower, you kind of can't tell until you're washing your hair that it's just there's not a lot coming through. And until you turn the dishwasher on. Yeah. And there's not enough water to power your shower anymore. I bought a house once and the home inspector was like, the tub's not filling up fast enough. And I loved that house. And I was like, why are you trying to ruin my day? But I'm a bath person. And if it took 45 minutes to fill up my bathtub, that would kind of be that's, horrible. That, and that's a really, really good point. That's actually the exact sentiment, I think, that motivated us to make this video, is that that's sort of how you feel sometimes. You, you love the house and you've fallen for it, and the inspector is ruining it. <laughs> so instead, and they're there to protect you. That's why you hire them. So instead of of uh, running the risk of feeling that way and having your heart broken, be prepared. Know that these are often things that can be fixed and sort of get your arms around what the cost is to fix them or, or maybe I'm willing to live with them. Mm. But that's um, something you just need to, that's a consideration with older homes. <laughs> so I think the third thing that we should talk about is the heating system. Absolutely. Because there's such a wide variety of heating systems in these old houses. Like and you might see the crazy octopus wrapped in unknown materials. Or, um, you know, and, yeah. a Mid mitigation. I, saw, I saw a furnace that was installed the same day I was born. Mm, it's amazing <laughs> that some of those are still in order. Working real good. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and we, I mean, the kinds of things that raise eyebrows, and that's all we're hoping to do here, is give you a heads up so that the day of inspection is not the first time you've heard of some of these things. You don't get scared. Um, it, you know, oil furnaces sometimes freak people out. So do your homework. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that involves an oil tank somewhere on the property. And so you want to be prepared for that. Uh, the old old furnaces, electric furnaces, sometimes are really old and they're still running. That doesn't always mean that they're not operable, that they're not functional for the property. Well, and I think something to point out here, and this goes for all of these systems, is typically a seller is not going to say, oh, there's nothing to, I'm going to fix that for you. They're going to say, it works. Yeah, and it's the same that, that that old furnace that was installed the week I was born, you know, my client was like, I think I want the seller to, to replace that. And I was like And the seller's like, Hey, it has been heating me and keeping me cozy for many years. Now. Yeah, and he called me actually like six months after he bought the house and he was like, I love this furnace. <laughs> like it makes the house so warm. And I thought that was so funny, but yeah. I mean so old and old does not necessarily mean you have to take care of it right away. I mean this is where the advice of your inspector and his contractor or and your contractors yeah. are gonna really come in handy. So do do a little bit of like work beforehand so that you really understand uh, what some of the possibilities are. Don't be freaked out. Rely on your home inspector and the referrals from your agent as far as looking into potential issues that come up. And just know that this is part of buying an old home. Like yep. crown molding and uh, hardwood floors, knob and tube wiring and galvanized plumbing go hand in hand. Absolutely. Leave you when you see